Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this quick video I'm going to check the Timotor Velox F7 SE budget-friendly stack. This stack is based on two products, the Velox F7 SE flight controller and the Velox V50 ASE 4-in-1 BLL32 ESC. Both products are of course available individually, however in case you'd like to you can purchase them as a stack for a reduced price. Let's start with the Velox F7 SE flight controller. In terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the flight controller, a total of 16 rubber grommets, 8 in each size, and just the connectors for connecting the flight controller to electronic accessories. In terms of features and specs, the Timotor Velox F7 SE flight controller features a USB Type-C port, an F7 processor, 5 volts 2 amperes and 10 volts 1.5 amperes BCs, six full UART ports, a physical boot button, a Bluetooth chip that will enable you to wirelessly configure the flight controller using SpeedyB's application, matching soldering pads in addition to just the connector, an ICM 42688P gyro chip, and it supports up to eight motors. In addition, it features an onboard barometer, an onboard 128 megabytes memory for storing black box data, it can be powered directly with up to 6S batteries and using these pads you'll be able to set the output voltage of the VTX to 5 or 10 volts, set the output voltage of the camera to 5 volts or the battery voltage and using these two pads over here you'll be able to enable pit mode. When pit mode is enabled you will be able to control the VTX output power meaning that you can turn it off and you can control it using an auxiliary switch on your radio controller after configuring the flight controller on Betaflight. In terms of weight and dimensions, the flight controller weighs 8.7 grams. It's using M4 30.5 by 30.5 millimeters mounting holes, which are reduced to M3 using the provided rubber grommets, and its outer dimensions are 37.2 by 36.7 by 6 mm. Moving on to the 4-in-1 ESC. In terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the 4-in-1 ESC, some Timotor stickers, an XT60 battery connector which is pre-soldered to 10 cm long 12 gauge silicone coated wires, and a bag that contains a 35 volts 470 microfarad capacitor, a harness for connecting the flight controller to the Velox F7 SE flight controller, another one without the and just the connector so you can customize it according to your needs, and 10 silicone grommets, 5 shorter ones and 5 longer ones. In terms of features and specs, the 4-in-1 ESC features BLL32 firmware, it supports a continuous current of 50 amperes with a burst current of 60 amperes for 5 seconds, of course per channel. It can be powered with up to 6S batteries. It features pretty big soldering pads which can be accessed from both top and bottom sides of the board and it is using a JST connector, unfortunately without extra soldering pads, for connecting the 4-in-1 ESC to a flight controller. In terms of dimensions and weight, the 4-in-1 ESC is using 30.5 by 30.5 mm M4 mounting holes which are reduced to M3 using the provided silicone grommets. It weighs 12.1 grams and its outer dimensions are 43.9 by 37.3 or 40.4 by 3.6 millimeters without the JST connector and 5.4 millimeters including it. Now as I've mentioned earlier, the flight controller features a Bluetooth model. Keep in mind however that at the moment of shooting this video, the wireless Bluetooth capability is only supported by SpeedyB's Android application and you want to be able to use the iOS version of SpeedyB. So now as you can see I'm trying to connect to the flight controller using the Android version of SpeedyB. It does take some time and might require a couple of retries but as you can see the app is working. In case you're not familiar with SpeedyB's application it's a very convenient way of configuring the flight controller on the go. It is very similar to Betaflight and 
pretty much enables you to do everything that you do on Bitaflight without having the need to use a computer. Anyway, that's going to do it for this quick overview video of the T-Motor Velox F7 SE stack. And at the first glance, as far as I can tell, the stack looks very promising, especially considering its price. Hopefully soon I'm going to be able to feature it in a build and flight video. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. I wish you all happy flying and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.